In this video, I want to cover deep self-discovery, the keys to deep self-discovery. Discover a world full of endless potential and possibility within yourself. And if you stay till the end, I'm going to give you some really cool tips um, that will unlock the gateway to your unconscious mind very easily. And it's really key to actually do that because for us to move on and better ourselves, we really need to, to uncover some of that stuff from our past uh, that our unconscious often doesn't bring to the forefront. And by taking advantage of this fleeting state, we have the opportunity and the ability to solve problems. Um, we can gain guidance and experience and uh, get to a state of inner wholeness. Uh, so if you've got any thoughts on this, I'd love you to drop a comment below. And as I say, if, we, if you stay to the end, I can show you some really cool tips on how to play with this. So there's two levels of consciousness. Uh, there, there's a, that borderland of sleep. We've got our awake consciousness and our asleep consciousness. And then in between, there's a state there which is actually called hypnagogia. And it uh, stems from the Greek word uh, hypnos, uh, which is sleep, and agogos, which is leading. So hypnagogia is that state we're in when we're leading into uh, our sleep. And during that period, there's normally a time there where things, our thoughts can be quite trippy, quite out there. And often they are a place of creativity and also a place of self-discovery as well. So it's a really, really cool place to be aware of and, and be in tune with and often have that uh, foresight to, to really jot down what we're actually seeing in that state. So um, love to know your comment if you've ever felt that uh, trance-like state um, yourself and, and what, what sort of came out from there. Now, it can be images, it can be sounds, it can be from repetitive things that we've experienced. You know, if you're answering calls all day on the phone, um, you may find that in that state you're doing a similar thing. Um, you know, you might be in doing shoveling or something during the day and you find that in that state you're actually shoveling. Um, it can be physical sensations, mental processes, um, there's even uh, a, an alarming state of sleep paralysis at times, but it, it is a totally harmless thing when you feel that sleep paralysis. So throughout history, there's been people that have um, been very aware, aware of hypnagogia and actually used it to bring out their creativity. Um, some of those people include Salvador Dali, the artist. Um, there was also Mary Shelley, who wrote Frankenstein. Uh, Thomas Edison was another one that used hypnagogia to get in touch with their creative side and, and problem solving skills. And what um, they actually, Salvador Dali used to hold a key in his hand and um, Thomas Edison would actually hold brass balls in his hand and then when they'd actually go from that state of starting to nod off, the in-between state, they once they would nod off, they would drop those um, things on the ground and it would bring them to. And they'd actually have a way of journaling what they'd gone through as well, which is a really key part to it, which I'll touch on very shortly. Um, and that sudden awakening would, would jolt them out and they'd be able to, to come up with what they were thinking about. Uh, Tibetan monks as well would uh, use hypnagogia for getting in touch with their spiritual side. So that's a, another way, not just for creativity or, um, you know, coming up with, uh, you know, our psychological side of things as well. It's actually can be used for getting in touch with our spiritual side. So very, very cool. Now, there's even in this day and age, um, there's people that call themselves one o one aeromancers. It's a hard word. Uh, again, it's from a Greek word. Um, one eros is dream, and mantera is prophecy. Um, so they use this state to actually predict the future, which is quite out there. Um, and I've 
had people close to me experience this around massive tragedy. Uh, they've they've awoken and said I've had a a really uh, quite vivid dream, and it was regarding say a tsunami, and sure enough, you know, a day later, a massive tsunami has um, touched the world, and and yeah, that gives you goosebumps just thinking about it. So. Um, and just before I shot this video, my partner actually flicked the TV on while being on hold on a phone call um, on mute and uh, and then turned the sound up once finished the call and it was uh, the program medium uh, with uh, Dubois, the lady Dubois, who actually was very, very good with getting in touch with her dreams and using it to trace down uh, killers and, and all sorts of heinous crimes and things like that. So I thought that was quite out of it to have that come on at that time. I thought, wow, that's quite amazing. Uh, yeah, so now using it for psychological growth, uh, it's very important. I, I'm a firm believer to, to really know yourself if you want to get better and, and, and better yourself and, and experience that self-development. Um, you know, uncovering and dealing with old traumas um, and wounds, you know, finding out sort of, you know, your shadow self coming in touch with, with things that have happened in the past. A lot of the time, the, the stuff that's hidden in our subconscious, we're not aware of. And hypnagogia is a good way for that to come out and for us to actually get in touch with those um, emotions and feelings. So it's a, a really uh, helpful thing for deep psychological discovery. Now, to get on to the tips to experiment with this, uh, the first tip is to set an intention. So you can actually put pen to paper, which can really help when dealing with the subconscious, and write out what your intention is. Now, an example might be that your experience with partners in the past is not ideal and you want to know why you're leaning towards those partners. So you might write write something down about that. Um, it might be why you feel these emotions around being in big public spaces or something that, that really you want to touch on. So you can put pen to paper and actually set the intention or do some meditation beforehand and really get into that space that you want to touch on. Find something to record the information, as mentioned earlier. Have a, a journal there um, or even a phone app where you can record your voice straight after if you're not much of a writer and record what you've experienced. And I will touch on at this stage that you may find it really wacky, the thoughts that you have. It might be one-dimensional or two-dimensional. Um, it could be sounds, it, it could be a mix of things that might be a, a horse mixed with some other animal or something like that. Um, personally, I used to, um, I haven't had it for some time, but as a kid I used to get it quite a bit, and I'd call it uh, small and big, um, and I'd feel really, really tiny, was, was at one stage, I'd be in that state of just nodding off, and I'd feel like I was tiny as opposed to everything else in the world. Uh, and the other feeling, it'd go the other way. And it'd almost be in the same instance. I'd feel t super tiny. And then I'd feel like my hand was just massive or uh, any part of my body. I don't know, not a specific p body part, but say a hand as example. I'd be laying on the bed and I'd feel like that hand was just huge. So that that's one I'd, I'd go through. Um, and I'm not sure what I need to meditate on that and work out what, what that was all about. So it won't always be apparent what it is about, but write it down or do that, um, you know, the observation of what you have actually gone through. Uh, set a gentle alarm. So you don't want to be coming out too being shocked out of um, or alarmed. You, if you've got an alarm on your phone, set it to a really low setting. And, and uh, or even try what Dali or Edison did and hold something in your hand. And then as you nod off and actually do fall asleep, your hand will open and, and you drop it on the floor and uh, that's enough to wake you up. I've had that sensation myself where the head starts to nod 
and you wake yourself up. Um, and then once you have observed and written down what you've uh, gone through, it's time to interpret that at the time. And as I say, it might not be evident at the time. It actually might be two or three days later that you go, oh, what was that all about? What were those colours or what was that mix of animals or what was that small, big um, feeling that I had? Um, so record it even if it seems really wacky or out there. Um, it is your subconscious thoughts coming through and it, and it may not be apparent at the time, but do record it and then perhaps meditate on that discovery as well, whether it be straight away or sometime after. Go back through that journal, that, that observation that you've taken and actually um, try and work out what it's all about. And with practice, you will get a lot better at it. It's uh, something that, similar to meditation, you will get a lot better at interpreting what it's all about and observing as well. Sometimes things are super clear, really vivid, and other times it can be not so clear as what you've just felt in that hypnagogia state. So I'd love to know any tips you've got. Put them in the comments below. Uh, if you feel like someone would appreciate this, feel free to share it. And uh, yeah, I'd love you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I want to touch on content as often as I can around bettering ourselves. I want to, to you know, transform a million lives as, as the channel name suggests. So, and I can't do that without, um, without putting out a lot of content and, uh, yeah, helping as many people as possible and bettering myself along the journey as well. So I appreciate you. Thank you for jumping on. My name's Ryan Billy Tate. And uh, I'd love you to reach out if you've got any suggestions, comments or tips. Thank you very much.